Saints, good evening. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord and amongst his people. And uh, I have the honor of preaching and bringing the word to you uh, this evening. And uh, I thank Pastor for that. I thank you that he trusts us to fill in for him whenever needed. And we're always glad to do it. And it's an honor and a privilege. Okay, let's, let's go after it in prayer. Father God. We just thank you for tonight, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that you just use me however you want to use me, Lord. Father, as, as let the word come forth the way you want it to come forth, Lord, and not, and not any desire that I might have, Father God, or any agenda that I might have, Father, but, Father, only your agenda and your way comes forward tonight, Lord, and I pray that I can make a difference by being obedient to the Holy Spirit, Lord. And Holy Spirit, help me to give me the right words, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, when uh, Pastor Dennis asked me to, to preach, I, um, I was... Uh, prayerful as to, you know, what, what should I bring? And, and the title of this message, if you're taking notes, is called uh, Prayer Emporium. Prayer Emporium. Um, one of the, um, for lack of a better term, one of the issues I find in the, in, in, in the body of Christ in, 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 in terms of, you know, the regular believer who sits in the chair week after week, and uh, uh, a lot of them uh, uh, have a, not all of them, of course, you know, <laughs> everybody has different gifts varying, but uh, I find that prayer is a topic most brought up. A lot, a lot of people bring up prayer, you know, oh, pray for me, pastor, pray for this, pray for that, uh, help me with this prayer. And, uh, you know, help me with this situation. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. But the um, Christianity is a discipline, okay? It's a discipline. We have to discipline ourselves to learn how to do things in the body of Christ, how to get things done in our life on a personal level. Pastor can't go home with you and, you know, hang out with you all day. And, and you know, as, as things come down the pike, start praying for you, you know, and, and show you how to pray or show you how to get into the word. And pray. these are things that we have to endeavor to do on our own. So today's message is, uh, I call it Prayer Emporium because what I want to do, a lot of people ask me, you know, uh, you know, how do you pray for your son? You know, we have an autistic son. He's, he's autistic. And he was diagnosed with that at two and a half years old. So very quickly, you know, we had to divulge into the word and dive into the word of God and start to find scriptures to minister to him that, that will help minister not only to him. And, you know, prayer is a two-edged sword. It's not just to talk to God because that's what it is, but it's also it comforts you at the same level. So that you stay calm and collective in, a, in, in an explosive situation or, you know, a stressful situation, which what we were under. So I have this little black book that I keep at home and I write these little scriptures. And one of the, uh, I'm going to endeavor to show you how I break down the word and how I apply it into prayer. All right. This is something that that I think is going to be very useful for you. And, and, and it'll demonstrate, you know, how to attack the word and, and how to apply it in prayer. All right? So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the, first, the scripture that the Lord brought me to in when, I, uh, when my son was first diagnosed and the whole wave of, you know, ah, you know was over after the screaming and the shouting and the uh, why me, Lord, and the... Uh, and, uh, you know, we all go through that, right? You know, something happens, goes wrong, and we're, oh, Lord, why me? Why did that have to happen to me? Look how I served you. These are verbatim my words to God. I said, Lord, I served you. I served you. We served you. Well, 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 what's going on? Why is my son autistic? Why, you know, why am I not feeling good? You know, whatever, whatever your situation is. 
So you fill in the blank. So but the one scripture that comes closest to, to, to my son's diagnosis was uh, in, um, is found in Mark 9. And we're going to start in verse 14. And hun, can you give me my reading glasses? Give me my jacket. Give me my jacket. Thank you. Praise God. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And uh, thank you, Shane. From the New Living Translation, it reads like this. When they returned... When they returned to the other disciples, they saw large crowds surrounding them, and some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. When the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe, and they ran to greet him. What is all this arguing about, Jesus asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever, and whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, you faithless people. <laughs> Jesus cut right to the chest. You faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring me the boy. Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy, but when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, uh, uh, writhing, uh, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening, Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. Verse 22, the spirit often throws him into the fire and into water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean if, I, if you can? If I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak. He said, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as people said, as people said he's dead. 27, but Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet, and he stood up. Afterwards, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? And Jesus replied, this kind can be cast out only by prayer. Amen. Praise God. So that, that particular scripture uh, kind of stood out to, uh, to me and my wife because some of those actions, you know, the inability to speak, the grinding of the teeth are behavioral things in autism. And uh, so uh, thank God. And there are children with autism that can go that whole nine yard round where they, you know, throw themselves on the ground and, and have all kinds of the spectrum is just so wide. So but uh, <clears throat> I want to start with verse 14. And, and, and verse 14, right, he says, when they return, when they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them and some Teachers of the religious law were arguing with them, you know. And, and the first, the first point that the Lord brought to my attention was that arguing over failed attempts for healing is unfruitful. Arguing, right? Arguing because that's that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to throw confusion. He wants to throw confusion into your life. You know, it's bad enough we have to walk through this. This, this, this life here as sojourners here, this is not really our home. You know, our home is in heaven and all that stuff. But, you know, there's no, there's, there's just so much wisdom in just that one verse. See, you have people that are going to argue with you about healing. There's people that are going to argue with you that prayer doesn't work. There, there's people that are going to say you're wacky and for what you, how you're praying 
and, and uh, that this prayer means nothing. And then you got even ministers that, that'll say, well, you know, if it's God's will that he be healed, and, and we know personally from studying the word of God that it is God's will that we be healed. Healing is the children's bread. God wants every one of us to walk into divine health and healing all the time. So verse 14 is, 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 is a point that, that you have to keep in the forefront of your thinking. When, you're, when you go to the, before you go to Father's house to start praying, you know, let go of those things. You know, the, let go of the, the negativity, the arguing, the failed attempts. Yeah, I prayed for this person. You know, I've prayed for a lot of people in, during the course of my ministry. And, 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 and uh, you know, some people got healed, some people didn't. And, and that's just the way it is. But to say that it wasn't God's will for that person to be healed, that's totally wrong because that's, we know that's not right. So the, we have to move on to that next thing that God wants us to do. And, you know, and, and, and the key is not to focus on the failed healings, but to keep our eyes on the one that can. Now, verse 15, right? When the crowd saw Jesus, right? When the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe. And that's where we have to draw our strength from, church. You know, we have to be overwhelmed when we bring Jesus into the picture. And, and, and that's, you know, that's like a big event, man. That's a real big event in, in, in your life. You know, when you're going through something, you're going through a battle, you know, the big event is, hey, wait a minute. Whoa. I'm not going to argue over this. I'm not going to get focused in the natural on what's not happening. But instead... I'm going to choose to get excited about Jesus, the one who can get it done. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So that's where we're at. So, uh, uh, yeah. So the key is that, you know, is to keeping our eyes on, on Jesus. Amen. Don't let the failed healing, don't let the what appears to be a failed healing. You know, Bible says Jesus is not slack concerning his promises as some count slackness. Right. And so a lot of times, you know, the, the world will always judge you and what's going on in your life. And they'll say, oh, wow, she's crazy. She's been praying for how many years now for that kid? And still there's no change. I don't see no change. Well, you know what we do? We do in regard to my son. I've seen changes in him from the time that we started praying for him when he was two and a half years old to now. Amen. And we've seen the dynamic <laughs> and they were dynamic changes, some of them. And so, you know, you take your little victories little by little. Right. Amen? So don't ever let the enemy discourage you to a point where, where you get so caught up in the trial that you lose your faith and you, you lose who you, who you trust in. Because your trust has to be in the Lord our God yes. and no other. And it can't be in, in any ability that you have. Amen? Amen? Amen. So in, in this first part alone... I came up with a simple prayer, and I'm just going to read it. And I said, you know, so a, a simple prayer would sound like this for just that, those first few verses that we went over. Father, we thank you that you are our overwhelming comfort in the midst of the trial. We are in awe of all you've done for us, and we run to you now and welcome your divine intervention concerning our son Stevie, or whatever your situation is. We run to you with, open, with arms open wide, with confidence that within you, Jesus, lies all the answers and power to heal our son. Amen. 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 So this is just an example how you could take a few words in the scripture and just bring it into a, a, a prayer situation for yourself. Now, that wasn't really too hard. It just takes time. And a lot of times we don't put the time in, you know. You know, uh, spiritual growth equals time. You know, you, you don't... You don't go from here to here spiritually without putting in the time. And I don't mean just passing time. I mean study time. You got to open up that word of God. You got to open it up, read it for yourself, and find the right scriptures. Find out, find out what, you, you know, what scriptures are going to work for you. And in this case, I'm just using my son as an example. So let's go on. So in verse 19, <laughs> I love Jesus. He's so awesome. Jesus says to them, you faithless people, how long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. Now, at first glance, you read that. You know, I'm like, man, Jesus, 
Jesus is mad? No, Jesus is not mad. That's not our Jesus. That's not the God we serve. He's a God of love and compassion, who's patient for thousands of generations, you know, whose love and kindness endures forever. And so, you know, it's not really a, a statement. Uh, uh, you know, it sounds like a statement of fr frustration, but it's not a tone of anger, that's for sure. But it's one that's deeply rooted in love. You know, when somebody's concerned about you, you know, they don't always talk nicey-nicey to you. You know, people, some people call it tough love, but I don't like calling it that. It's not tough love. It's just love. It's just love. When you have a, when you have a strong desire to help somebody in your family, well, that thing just rocks your world. And, and you're going to tell that person the truth regardless of whether they're going to receive it or not. <laughs> so here's Jesus, the master, you know, and he's our example, right? And so he says, oh, he says, oh, wait a minute. He says, you faithless people. He showed them exactly what the problem was. You lack faith. You faithless people. And, you know, and this was a teaching opportunity for Jesus, too, in this particular scripture. It was Because who, who was there? Who was there? We had the disciples, right? And then who else? Those, that crazy bunch of people, the Pharisees, you know, and, and uh, the religious leaders of the time who were trying to make the disciples look bad because, you know, they, they weren't successful in casting out that, that demon out of the boy. And so Jesus is, is taking this on, and he's teaching them. He's saying, hey, you faithless people. Uh, and, and, and he draws attention to the very thing that went wrong, and, and again, it was just a teaching, it was a teaching uh, moment for both the disciple and for the Pharisee. So the, the lesson that Jesus gives them in its simplest form, so I like to do that, you know, when, I, when I'm reading something and, you know, I, I read it through and then I, I, I read it again and then I read it line by line, you know, and that's important because scripture is really powerful. And, you know, to take, like, I mean, that was a long, that was a long, you know, exhortation that we just read. But then when you break it down, you know, it becomes even more powerful. So, so we see little things start to pop up. So, so I, like to, I like to make analogies as to, you know, what does it mean? Well, what does it mean? It means less faith equals less power. So to me, that's the message that I gleaned off of. You might get something totally different, Right? So, you know, because the scriptures, I tell you, they're, <laughs> the gospel, I mean, I'm, as many times as I've read it, you know, and, and uh, how many times I've read this particular scripture, I always get something different. You know, God, God will always minister to you what you have need of as you're reading the word. And this is like, you know, that's a mystery. You know, no, that, that's why the word is so powerful. That's why the Bible is the number one bestseller in the world. Because it just has that, that way of, of just bringing things to light in your life. I know that's what it did for me, and that's what it's doing for all of us, really, if you just stick with it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So anyway, so to me, you know, the, the, this, was, this was the, 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 the uh, that was the message Jesus was sending. Because he loved them. He wants to see that boy healed. He wants... <laughs> He wants that father to get restored in his faith. You know how many times I prayed that for myself. I said, Father, help me with my unbelief. You know, and that's scriptural. I could do that. I could go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, man, I'm having trouble with something, man. Just, just help me with my unbelief. You know? And Jesus said, hey, anything's possible for those who believe, he tells me. Right? And, and so if anything is possible, and anything, that's a broad road, right? Anything is anything. Last time I looked, anything. So don't hesitate to bring things to God in prayer, right? Because, you know, we, we do an injustice to ourselves. You know, Philippians 4, 6. Um, let me see. Let's go there. And you guys know this, 4, 6. It says, don't worry about anything. You know, that's the first thing that a trial does, right? The minute you're in a trial, boom, here it comes. It's coming, man. It's coming. 
Some people, some people, uh, somebody asked me once, when does the trial stop? When does the devil stop talking to you? The answer to that is never. He don't. He don't stop. He don't quit. You know, his name is Diablos, and it means to strike with blows over and over and over and over and over. And that's all he does. He's going to keep doing that until you do something about it. So you got to say to the devil, you got to take authority. You got to know your rightful place in, in the body of Christ. You got to know that you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. You got to know that your prayers are powerful. Amen. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything. Here comes the trial. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Don't tell him what you need and then just keep telling him what you need. You know, God's not hard, he's not hard of hearing, you know. He, he doesn't have a hearing impediment. So, you know, uh, God hears the slightest whisper. You say, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. And it's the same as, help me, Jesus. It's the same thing, same effect. It rings in the, in, in the throne room of God every time you open your mouth in faith and, 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 and seek out the Lord in prayer and supplication and just giving things over to him. Oh, how he loves that. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> he loves that. Brings joy to his heart that you're trusting in him. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise God. So Philippians 4, 6, and then, and then he says, and, and thank him. You know, let's not, let's not, let's not, uh, I mean, not that repetition doesn't bother God. But you know what? He hears you. So we pray in faith, and then we thank him. You know, this is a formula here for prayer. You know, uh, tell, tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. Whoo, glory to God. How many of us need that today? How many of you came here and actually and, and are having a difficult time? And, you know, you don't have to raise your hand or anything like that. But, you know, but, you know we're all going through something. The, you know, this, this cycle called life is not easy sometimes. And, and things get thrown at us, and we have to be prepared. And then, and then when, we, when we take this scripture and we apply it in our life, we see how great God is. God is to us. He begins to, to minister to you with peace that exceeds anything, that surpasses all understanding in the King James Version, it says. And his peace will guard your hearts and what? Minds. Minds. As you what? Live. Live in Christ Jesus. I love that. See, and so when you're studying the Word of God, you understand the subtle differences between when the Bible says Christ Jesus and Jesus Christ. So when it says Christ Jesus, it's immediately talking about the deity of God because he uses the word Christ first. And a lot of times you'll see Jesus Christ. So now the scripture is referring to the man Jesus and then the power of Christ, of the deity behind him. So make those different, you know, those, those, those notice those little sub, sub, subtleties in the word of God. And it will help you. And so we see here that subtlety, you know. His peace will guard your hearts and minds because that's what prayer does. Remember, I told you it's a two-edged sword. Now, you know, it guards your heart. And now you're seeing that it guards your mind as well. So it's, he's, 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 um, he's telling us the power of prayer is for the whole man because it brings spiritual uplifting. It lifts you up spiritually for the task at hand. And your mind comes into a realm of peace, and, and, and that peace, you know, it's a shalom, shalom, shalom. It's peace, peace, nothing missing, nothing broken in your life, and you continue despite the circumstances. Amen. 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 I mean, the circumstances are, can be tough, and, 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 and let me tell you, uh, you got to understand you, how the word says to deal with these things, you know. And, and so that's what we're, we're that's what we're doing tonight, you know. They had, you know, and then it says it says here. I got this note here. It says effective prayer, effective faith is built on effective prayer, and that's what I got in the spirit around when I was reading that. You know, uh, effective faith is built on effective prayer. 
the more effective your prayer life is, the more effective your faith level is going to be in the situation. So the more you pray, you know, the more you're obedient to pray about everything in your life, you're going to walk in faith in that thing, you know. And so the devil's going to come and go, ha, ha, look at this. And you're going to go, forget about that. And you're going to start quoting scripture to the devil. That's how you shut him up. That's how Jesus did it. He came when he met Jesus in the wilderness. Jesus says, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. He didn't say, oh, it's my opinion. He didn't say, oh, well, I think. Oh, he didn't say, oh, well, well, maybe. No. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. The power is in the logos of the word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Luke, uh, you you know, the, the apostles, they had good success in many areas. So they were kind of baffled. They were kind of baffled. They were, they were, they were shaken. They were, they were like, whoa, you know. They were like, wow, how come, how come we weren't able to do it? Yeah. You know, they, they, were, they were stunned because, because of uh, Luke 10, 20, you know, Jesus told them, don't, but don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Yeah. These guys, you know, they were hanging out with the master, you know, and miracles were going on all around them. And, you know, there was a, a little claim to fame going on. Hey, that's it. Oh, he's with Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They fed 5,000 people and more, in the, you know. And, and, oh, man, look at it. Oh, they claimed that. They, they, they cast out demons, you know. They kept, cast out devils. And so they were, they were baffled as to why this didn't work for them. And so, but, but that's what happens, you know. We can never... Mm, we, we can never let our past victory dictate our future. What we did in the past and what worked in the past doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work in the future. So God is, that's why we need to go to God in prayer. I mean, if, you, if we don't go to God in prayer and, and, and get his direction for the situation, there's no way, there's no way, you know, there's no way you're going to know. So talking to God is so important. It's vitally important, right? Praise God. All right. And then every type of healing, you know, I got this other note I wrote. Every type of healing requires a different level of prayer. Jesus knew his time was short, so to him it was vitally important. He says, how long must I be with you? It was vitally important to Jesus that his disciples grasp the importance of faith fueled by prayer. His statement is an indication of the learning curve required to have the God kind of faith and full operation in the life of the believer. His statement clearly says that the principles of God, faith fueled by prayer, will work for all who will believe and very quickly. The learning curve is short because the principles of God, when properly applied, works. Boom, in one paragraph. So that's what it is, you know. God, God wanted them to learn, and he wanted them to learn quickly. And he wanted them to, to take that learning. You know, I deal with a lot of software, and sometimes when I'm dealing with a new software, there's a, what we call learning curve. You know, you don't know, oh, well, where's the exact menu? Where are the menus you're looking for? And this and that. And, you know, but uh, uh, so there's a little learning curve. Well, God, God's got no learning curve. He just put it right in the Word. And he says, hey, here it is. This is how you do it, and this is how you need to operate. You know, and, and, and so that's, that's the beauty of the word of God. And it's at a fifth grade weeding level. How about that? A lot of people don't know that. I, I, took, I took the whole gospel of Mark, and I copied it into Microsoft Word, and I ran the grammar check on it, and it says fifth grade reading level. Wow. Wow. So did he want everybody to understand the gospel? Yes. Does he ever want everybody to understand how to operate in, in the prayer of faith and, and to heal the sick? Uh, yes, absolutely. Because that's, that's the children's bread is, is healing. So he goes, uh, so verse 19, he says, how long must I put up with you? That's another, that's another word that seems to be like, like, uh, uh, like some kind of uh, frustration kind of thing. But it's not. You know, Jesus is like, oh, man, you know. He knew his time was short. You know, he had a mission. You know, he had the mission from the Father. He was carrying that mantle of the Father to, 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 
to, uh, you know, to the people. And so he had a mission. So his, his time is never to waste. His thing is never to waste any time. So he wanted to see it happen. He said, how long must I put up with you? Another statement of concern fueled by love. That was, that's what fueled that. Jesus' concern for us to grow up spiritually in the principal things of God was one of his most main objectives for his disciples as he knew that he would, he, as he knew that they would have to carry on the mantle. They would have to take that gospel message to the world. And they did. Thank God. Praise God. So our prayers have to be, our prayers have to be activated by love, love and compassion. And that's what you see. That's what you see in this story. It's love and compassion. Jesus just, just saying, wow, you know, and just, and just saying, oh, I got I to gotta fix this right away. You know, the urgency, the love. You know, God's love for us in, is immense. You know, he, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't want us to, he doesn't want us to suffer here on this earth. He doesn't want any delay in our finances. He doesn't want any delay in our health and healing. You know, he, he wants to see us move on with him. And, and prayer is the most important aspect of that. You know, prayer, you know, I got another note here. Because, because faith worketh by love, it's obvious that prayer is also initiated by love. Case in point of this prayer book, which I wrote, you know, it was because I had a love for my son, and I wanted to see him healed. And so, when when you get when you get that in your heart as a father, you know, and 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 man, you know, I love what Brother Hagen used to say. He used to say spiritual things are are a lot like natural things. So the same the same compassion and love that you have for your children, whether you're a mother or a father, you know, it's the same thing. That that's. The book of love, man, this, is, this, this whole Bible thing is just a love story of, of a God who loves his people and wants to see them, you know, do, do the right things and, and be successful. Amen? Amen. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what it's about, you know. And, uh, but Jesus, you know, we got to follow his example, church. And so this, for this section, I wrote a small prayer. And this, this is how that prayer would go based on everything that I just spoke. It says here, and I have this written in my little diary. It says, Father God, help us to, to totally trust and rely on your principles of prayer to help build our faith so we can achieve godly results in our lives and in the lives of all who we pray for. Reveal to us the level of prayer required to reach the desired result. I pray that we never take shortcuts or rely on yesterday's victories in order to receive the results needed for today and for all of our tomorrow needs. I lay aside all thoughts of spirituality at your feet. I pray that I would never pretend to know more than you do. I thank you for full understanding of your will for all who I pray for is yes and amen. Help me not to become frustrated with the outward results that work against my faith, but to stay focused on the truth of your principles and power. Father, help us to grow up spiritually. We break the bondage of unbelief in Jesus' name. We boldly confess the time is now and our days as infants is over. Reveal to us all who are hurting and lead us in prayer for them by your Holy Spirit. And as we pray in secret for them, we pray that our faith will be fortified with strength from God. So when we lay hands on the sick, they will recover immediately Praise in God. Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. 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 And, and, and uh, man, I'm encouraging you uh, to do, do stuff like this. It's so paramount. It's so important. And let me tell you, when you finish, whatever it is, you know, whichever word you decide to study and break down like this, you're going to feel so blessed. And you're going to feel so confident. And you're going to know, you're going to know that God is on your side. You know, you're going to know. You're going to have a confidence and faith like never before. Amen? Amen. 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 And then... Uh, 
this part, verse 19, the back, the, the back verse on that, 19b, as they refer to it sometimes. Hang on a sec. And 19b, 19, there it is. And he says one simple statement. You know, for me, the word is, is very impactful. And, and it takes just one little sentence for me sometimes, you know. Uh, some people need to read more than others. But this, this particular verse, I think, is, is just a, fi a final statement. And he says in verse 19b, Bring the boy to me. I love that final statement, you know. It's filled with boldness and authority of the Godhead. Bring the boy to me. Let me break it down for you. That word bring, according to the vines, means to bear or carry it also is used of bringing forth fruit. All right? So that's what it means. It means we, the, uh, the, that's what that word means, bring. It means bring. It means bring. It says, to, 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 according to the vines, it means to bear or carry it also is used of bearing or bringing forth fruit. Now, when you break down the next word, boy, the term boy in the Strong's is a term of endearment. The Strong's metaphorically defines the term of anything who depends upon it is possessed by a desire of affection for it and is addicted to it. That just described the Father's heart for you. That just described the Father's heart for you. God doesn't see you as insignificant. Ever. Ever. And in that one sentence is a power-packed phrase you got to buy yourself a Vines Concordance and a, <laughs> Strong's, and a Strong's uh, Biblical Dictionary and look up some of these words sometimes. And so when he says, bring the boy to me, he's like, don't delay, you know, and, and, you know because there's a fruit yeah. that needs to be brought forth out of this child. Yeah. Wow. There's a fruit in him dwelling in him, in all of us. There's a fruit inside of you that God sees, that you don't see, that other people can't see. But God sees it all. Bring the boy to me. The process of bringing a problem, situation, need, or healing is one that requires complete commitment. There could be no hesitation, no reservation on our part. We must approach the master empty-handed, not pretending to know anything, just totally 100% 100 trust in who we are approaching for help. Messiah, Yahweh, Yeshua, the God of this world. Praise God. Jesus defined who he is to the boy and who the boy is to him. In that one definition. Right? The child was totally dependent on Christ's affection for him. And Jesus' addictive love for his father's people always created the right atmosphere for the healing power of God to move upon his afflicted ones. Love cast out all fear. That same love will cast out sickness and disease. That same love will patch a broken heart. Wow. Just in one sentence, man. It's amazing. The word just continues to blow my mind. I've been 35 years saved now, and it's like it's, it's, it never gets old. It never gets old. It's why I do what I do, because I love it. I love it. I love getting into it and getting down and dirty with the word, as we say in the Bronx. All right, Bronx people. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but, uh, 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 you know, 
It says bring, you know, the, the word just the bring. That gets me excited, you know. You know, just the word bring, bring. You know, when somebody brings you something, that's awesome, isn't it? I mean, when people bring you stuff, I mean, you know, how much, the, how does the rich and famous love to, they have to, somebody won one point something billion dollars or something like that in California, but uh, somebody's life has just changed dramatically, and I hope they know what to do with the money. So, but, you know, they can spend the rest of their days just sitting down and have people bring stuff to them if they want. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, but, but you know, when, when God brings you something, oh, well, oh, and when you bring something to the Lord, Amen. when you come and say, Lord, man, I need this, man, and the Lord looks at you, you know, he's not going to say, about time, man, you know. God don't talk to us like that. He doesn't say, man, it's about time, you know, what took you so long? But sometimes that's how I feel, you know. Sometimes, you know, you know I, I'm like, oh, wow, why did I wait so long to stop praying? So, yeah, God is so good. So, uh, uh, and, and Jesus, man, he's no joke. He's, he, 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 he loves it when you bring stuff to him. Uh, you know, and, 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 then, and then when I, when I said this, I got a little note here. It says, this means that within each of us, there is a hidden fruit that God is anxious to reveal in each and every one of us. That's what he wants to do. He wants to reveal things to us. He wanted to reveal to that father that all he needs is the mustard seed faith for his son to get his deliverance. And so many times we, we fool with our emotions and how we feel. And it's not about any of that. It's about bring. Bring it to the master. Put it in his hands. Let him be the one to deliver. Let him be the one. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And for this, this, this last one, and this is the prayer I came up with, and then we'll close with that. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We come to you in all boldness and total trust in who we are approaching. Your son who died so that we may live, prosper, and be in good health, even as our soul prospers, Jesus. Father, we ask that you tap into the hidden fruit of healing that is locked up inside of my son, Stevie, or inside of your situation. And the clear act and, and clear articulation in Jesus' name will come forth. Our trust is in you, Lord. And because of your relentless and addictive love for us, you are more than willing to die for all sickness and infirmities on the cross on Skull Mountain. Father, we repent from the times we failed to trust you we empty ourselves of knowing anything other than the healing power of an awesome God whose love for us goes beyond our mental thinking and comprehension. Thank you, Lord, for healing my wife and, and I on a mental level and healing my boy, your boy, Stevie, from the bondage of autism in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you could play that. Now let's, uh, we're just going to take some time now just to... Just to think about what we just learned and uh, to, to just, you know, put forth a little bit of a prayer here. I got some other scriptures I want to share with you real quick. And then we'll close. We got like 10 minutes and we'll just, just take this time to get into his presence. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father. And just whether sitting or standing, whatever you want to do, just right where you're at. I just want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You are the holy God. Yes. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father God. Help us to embrace the word of God like no other word. 
time in our lives. But right now, Father, Father, your word says that I am the Lord that healeth thee. Genesis 15, 15 says, you should be buried in a good old age. I will take sickness away from the midst of you and the number of your days I will fulfill. I will not put any of these diseases that you're afraid of on you, but I will take sickness away from you. I will be, it will be well with you and your days shall be multiplied and prolonged as the days of heaven upon earth. Thank you, Father. Thank you for each person here, Father God. We lift up the, them as well as their family members, Lord. Whoever's going through a tough time, Lord. We lift them up right now. We thank you that healing is for them. Deuteronomy 2861, I have redeemed you from every sickness and every plague. Praise God. I have healed you and brought you and brought up your soul from the grave. I have kept you alive from going down to the pit. Psalm 31. Psalm 29, 11. I will give you strength and bless you with peace. Whatever you might be going through, the Prince of Peace is with you. That surpasses all understanding, church. I am the health of your continents and your God. No plague shall come near you. long life. I heal all your diseases. Hallelujah. Ha! The years of your life shall be many. Ha! You come against that voice of the enemy saying that you, your life is going to be short or your life's going to be cut off or there's going to be a terrible we rebuke that in Jesus' name. My words are life to you and health and medicine to all your flesh. Thank you, Father God. Oh, Father God, we embrace your word as the medicine that we need. Hallelujah. Help us to meditate on a day and night. Thank you, Father God. My joy is your strength. A merry heart does good like medicine. Praise God. Ha, anybody who's blind, the eyes of the blind shall be open. The eyes of them that see shall not be dim. Heart of hearing. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. The ears of them that hear shall hearken. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Hi. The lame man shall leap up. Ha <laughs> ha. Shall leap up as a heart, as a deer. strength back into those legs and those muscles and those ligaments. Speak to knee problems right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I command those knees to be whole. Strengthen those knees, Father God. I thank you, Lord. Father God, and I thank you for wisdom for the believer, Father God. If they need to be doing therapy, let them be doing therapy. Let them go physical therapy. Let them get it, get it strong. You got to be able to do. You got to do. You got to do the right things to make your body strong. Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? You're not your own. 
You were bought with a price. And it wasn't cheap. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, for those who are depressed, and Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word says in Isaiah 40, 29, I give power to the faint. I increase strength to them that have no might. Oh, Father, we speak to depression right now in Jesus' name. We command depression to cease and desist in the life of the believer. It can't stay. It can't stay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that he would believe in him and not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Father. sicknesses. I carried your sorrow and pains. With my stripes you were healed. I will heal you. Thank you, Father. I will restore your health and I will heal you of your wounds, saith the Lord. Whatever wounds you might have, God sees it. Don't suffer alone. Don't suffer alone, church. Don't suffer alone. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. You come to the Lord in faith. You come to the Lord in faith, truly believing that what you ask for, he will accomplish. Thank you, Lord. We do the best that we can, and we let the Lord do the rest. That's my, that's my saying. I have arisen with healing in my wings. Malachi 4 2. Seek me and you shall live. Amos 5. Thank you, Father God. That's what we're doing today. We're looking for you. We're seeking you, Father God. We're seeking your face, Father God. We thank you, Father God. Right now, just, just, just maybe put your hands out like this and just lift up everything that, everything, everything, everything. Lift up everything to the Lord right now. People watching on TV. Lift up your hands. Put your hands out in front of you like this. And just take all those things, all those concerns, and just lift them up to the Lord. And trust Him. Trust Him, church. Trust Him for everything. Trust Him for all your needs. Because He is the one that cares to know what He is. He's the one that will bring that good fruit forward out of you that you need. That fruit of healing. The fruit of joy. The fruit of whatever it is. God will bring it forth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. So we cast all our cares. You go like this. You cast all your cares upon Jesus because he cares for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Praise the Lord.